All right, guys, welcome back to Barcoded Chats with your girl, Nateria and Sydney. We are back like we never left. I know y'all missed us. We are back, back, back again. <laughs> yes. So we had a bit of a little mishap, a little, I had a scare. I got Corona, guys. I just straight up, I got it. I was, I had the tested positive for COVID-19, point blank period. And the crazy thing was, like, we were hanging out. We went out of town together. We went a lot of places together. And I literally kept testing negative. Thank the Lord. But she gave it to me. (laughs) No, y'all. I never was positive. Never. So I'm really not understanding. And everybody that was around Sydney tested negative. Yep, literally. Everybody. My roommate, her, my uh, other friend. My mama. (laughs) Like, yeah. So. Wear your mask, sanitize your hands, stay safe out there, because I have no idea where I got this shit from. Uh, I'm negative now, hence why we're back. Took about 18 days. I went to go get tested on my 10th day, and I still had it. So I had to wait it out again, and they told me to wait another week. So that's what I did. But luckily, I was fully asymptomatic, not a symptom in sight, no diarrhea, no coughing, no sneezing, no loss of taste, no loss of smell, not even a fever. So I was just in my room, you know, chilling, working. I'm starting to think she did a fake COVID test so she could get a little alone time. Because when I say this girl was calling me damn near every day, doing photo shoots, makeup looks, had tea to spill. That don't sound like nobody with Corona to me. I was so bored. So uh, check out my Instagram, Sydney's. Mm -hmm. I got all my looks up there. So go check it out, guys. But that is why we were away because we do film in person. And right now we are not set up to do like Zoom things. So the show was on hold for a little bit. And we prefer to be in person, honestly. Yes. Um, I don't think it would be the same if we recorded separately. But, you know, it's, it's cool. But like Cindy said, please be aware and be cautious because this girl been working from home. The only place that she been is the grocery store. No, like really. So I'm really not understanding. Yes, we went out of town and went to a wedding and everything. But again, Cindy was the only positive person. So I don't understand. We went to a strip club. If you listen to the last episode, you know that. True. We did go to a, a lit bachelor party and a lit wedding. So, stay safe, guys. But we are going to get into this week's episode, which comes as no surprise. We're going to talk about the election for a little bit and then do a little Potomac catch up. So stay tuned for the entire episode. Yes, yes. So we know that everybody's week has been crazy. Everybody's been thinking about this election. If you did not go vote early, I hope you went and voted on election day, which was November 3rd, this past Tuesday. So I hope you went and you got your vote in. Um, I was actually listening to the radio election day morning, and a lot of people said they did not go early vote because they wanted the feel of the rush and the panic of going to vote the same day. I don't understand that. That actually gives me a lot of anxiety because it's more people, it's packed, it's rushed, like, no. So, yeah. I hope you guys went and got your vote on. No, really, guys. I really hope you voted. This election, like, as silly as it sounds to say, this election was not about the candidates. This election was about voting for right and wrong. Yeah, a lot of people were stating the reasons why they didn't vote is because they didn't like the candidates or they were still fans of Obama or they were unaware of any, you know, knowledge about the candidates or knowledge about the election. But I just feel like that's very ignorant of people because you're quick to Google a movie trailer or you're quick to Google some rap lyrics or a music video. So the same energy you use to Google all those things are the same is the same energy that you can use to Google the electoral can- candidates. Like, yes, nobody is, nobody's maybe a big fan of Trump and maybe people aren't a fan of Biden, but at the end of the day, those are two people that we have to choose from. And Obama's not in the running anymore, so he y'all can't need to be. leave him out. Legally, that man can never be in the running again. So, 
Mm -hmm. I get it. I understand that people have their side and they think Biden's not going to do anything and he's just you know, coming in here for whatever reason. But the thing is, it's not about Biden. It was never about anybody that the Democrats would have chose. It was about simply getting that man out of office. And we're still waiting on those results. We are. It's currently sitting at about 264 and 214 still, because they are still counting Nevada as slow as hell and Pennsylvania and North Carolina and Georgia. So I just, I hope, I've done the math, guys. If Donald Trump wins those three states, he will be at 265 electoral votes, and you only need 270 to win. Now, that's still okay, even if he gets a 265, because Joe Biden already has 264. So he just needs Nevada's extra six to give him that literal 270. But if somehow Nevada jumps and goes to the red, Donald Trump could possibly win this election. And right now, Nevada is literally a difference of just like a couple hundred thousand votes if we're being honest about this so it's a nail biter everybody's still you know nobody's saying anything everybody's still holding their breath because who knows this man is trying to throw votes out his dumbass constituents is uh stop the vote and then in other places they're saying count the vote y'all gotta get on the same page yeah the fact that he's trying to um do lawsuits against these states it's hilarious, and I think it's funny that they keep throwing them out because, really, like, you're doing that to try to, you know, not give Biden as many votes, but it's like, you know, you got to be the te- a team player, homeboy, and just like they're saying, it's the same thing, you know, you was doing to Hillary, so now the tables have turned, and you just got to wait your time, my dude. <laughs> I mean, it's just, yeah, and for the people who didn't vote I understand your confliction but it's not really a reason because to my black people who didn't vote people gave their lives people gave their lives people stood in line people did so many things to make sure that your black ass could vote today for this very reason and for you to sit on your couch or to sit somewhere else and not try to take advantage of the full week Mm -hmm. over a fucking week almost of early voting and then the fact that My job, for instance, they gave us two paid hours off to go get our ass in line to fucking vote. Now, I know in some places, the lines were over two hours long. That's an issue they need to fix. But for you to not vote, like, how dare you? But there's there was too many opportunities, like Sydney said. Like, you had the whole, like, week that you could early vote. You had election day. And like she said, I know my job, like they sent an email with underlying policy that you have time to go vote if you have not go vote, you have not went and voted. So, you know, I'm pretty sure if you actually, you know, talk to your boss or looked up at your your work handbook or policy that you'll see that it gives you time to go vote. And, you know, they had too many other ways that you can go vote. You can drive up, you can do mail-in, you can physically go vote. Like, there was no reason why you guys shouldn't have went and voted. And if you live in Harris County, Harris County alone had over 800 voting facilities. So, there's no way. Like, and, and Houston is not even just Harris County. You know, for being that they own, they own voting. You know, all the different counties got their own voting. So just in Harris County, it was over 800 facilities. So again, there was no reason why you shouldn't have went and voted. Yes, there might be both candidates. You might have not liked them. But at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for you, especially if you have children in this world. Baby, when you dead and gone, you're not going to be able to do nothing for these kids. So you got to make sure that you're bettering for them. You can't even just think about yourself. Like, you got to think about your kids' future, your future, like, the safety of this country. Like, we are black people growing up in America. Like, come on now. 
And just be, and if you think that by not participating in this system is going to get anything done, it's not. You need to be on the ground level of things. And that's what I feel like this generation and people before us or after us, it's just a lot of apathy and a lot of instant gratification. These changes are not going to happen within a year. Black people just saddle up. We need to saddle up for this ride and be ready. You may not see the change, but your children may see the change. Exactly. And that's what you need to be focused on. So by you sitting here and complaining about reason after reason after reason about why you don't want to vote for Biden, you're letting Trump win. And exactly. if you voted for Kanye, don't even fucking speak to me ever again if you know me <laughs> well yeah guys that's crazy like literally by you not voting you're giving somebody else the upper hand which is dumb that's crazy like that is that's crazy I just don't see how you can be over the age of 18 eligible to vote and choose not to that really makes absolutely no sense to me because you call yourself grown you know you out here paying bills you get up and going to work every day you can't be too grown if you're not going to vote. And what about all these people who sit up here and you tweet this and you post this on Instagram and you follow all this stuff? So why don't you show up to the polls if you believe all these statistics? Sometimes y'all need to get up off of Facebook, find yourself a book, find yourself Google and go get some real facts and resources okay because there are plenty of ways to change things and you will get lost in a hole and believe that you can't get out and you know there's a and then i do feel bad for people who are having to fight right now i have a good friend of mine she is white and she been going at it with her family she's had to go at it with her family because they're saying slick ass comments and some of them actually did vote for biden but they have a problem if kamala if Kamala were to become a president, which is another reason, you know, Republicans, whoever, if you are a Republican and you didn't like Donald Trump, they probably didn't vote for Biden because they don't like Kamala. Let me say her name correctly. They don't like Kamala. And I just, it's just ridiculous. Like, when are we going to stop letting hate, like, run this country? Like, it's just not going to get us in. But we need the youth because let me read y'all a little poll. Now, this was off of circle analysis of AP VoteCast from the Associated Press. So, the young people of color that supported Biden and Trump, if we look at the black youth, 88% supported Biden, 9% supported Trump, and then there's a little bit of another category. Then you have the Asian youth, 83% percent support Biden 13 percent support Trump then we get to the Latino youth 75 percent support Biden 21 percent support Trump we're gonna get into that in a second but then you get to the white youth 53 of them would support Biden, but 42% of them would support Trump, which just goes to show that this type of hatred is taught and passed down. Because why are 42% of young people wanting to follow in behind a man that's so nasty because they're doing what their parents are telling them to do? And mind you, these people are over here voting for somebody that plain as day disrespects women he has like over 20 accounts of sexual assault and he's our president and mind you his own wife can't fucking stand him he did not give us a stimulus check we got one and y'all still voted for him when you think that next one coming it's what uh, eight nine months later seven months later like what is wrong with people and I hope y'all dumbass didn't vote for him because he said that y'all will get y'all stimulus after voting. Because y'all dumb if y'all thought that. And you poor motherfuckers who Trump don't give a fuck about, At he all. is not going to tax you. So stop voting for this man for taxes because you're not rich. You're not rich and you're not going to be rich if Trump stays in office because he don't want you to be rich because they only want to keep a few of them because if poor people get rich, it's over. Yep. 
I just need everybody to just be a little more conscious about how you're moving. I'm not saying I'm out here doing anything particularly great right now, but I am trying to learn. I am trying to educate myself in how to get out there. I did join the NAACP earlier this summer. I'm trying to find organizations and things that are for us and that stand with us so we can uplift each other. But do not get lost in this crazy narrative because there's not going to be some savior. You need to put in the work that you want to see. We all have to do this together. We need to stop this apathetic um just type of response to politics that's what they want they want to keep you illiterate and they want to keep you complicit yep you have to do the research and the work if you want something different stop waiting around and just like they also said on the radio if you did go vote i hope you did your research and didn't just go in there blind clicking names because if you did go in there blind clicking clicking names, you know, even though you did vote and you did do your part, you might have voted for somebody that is not going to do for you in the long run or look out for you in the long run. So don't think you just have to do research on the president. You have to do research on the judge, on the precincts, on everything, on the sheriffs, on all of that. So you know, especially the precinct that you're in, especially for all the people that don't even like the laws, Y'all need to be the main ones researching because y'all need to know who y'all up against if something didn't happen. Like the judge is everything. So stop complaining about this, 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 and this when you sit in your house and you do the same thing every day over and over again and not doing anything to further yourself or your community. Right. And sharing Facebook posts isn't it? Not at all. You need to be talking about it. And I know it's an uncomfortable discussion to have, but that's the point. Once again, they don't want you to talk. They don't want you to read. They don't want you to grow. That's what America thrives on, keeping us poor and illiterate and complicit. Agreed, agreed. So we're going to wrap this up. That's our little PSA out there for you guys. So... Let's just all hope that when this comes out tomorrow, we're a little bit closer to possibly knowing the president. But once again, guys, these next four years, whoever wins, you got to put in the work and you got to just ignore because that's the only way it's going to get done out here. The government showing us they don't give a fuck about us. They're not going to help us. So we got to help ourselves. True. Very true. So, for all my people that went and voted, and I hope you're not staying up all night and not being able to sleep and having anxiety about who's going to be president. Like, at this at this point, you voted, you did your part, now God is in control. That's all you can say. Pray about it and move on. I mean, we didn't have Trump for the last four years. God willing, we won't have him for another four. God willing. But if we do, Lord help us, you know? With that said, we're going to take it to a fun part, a little lighter part of our episodes. Baby, we are back with three episode reviews of Real Housewives of Potomac. Even though I've been in COVID, I've been watching. Okay, we've been watching. Me and the TV having text messages. Oh, we've been cracking up over these girls. Oh, yeah. We literally text through the whole show. Like, I know. Did you see that? <laughs> Girl, what? Like, no, really. We be into it. So I hope y'all tuned in for the last three episodes of Potomac. It's not too many more. It's not. There's literally two episodes left, and we're going to break it here. There's two episodes of our show left before we take a little break and come back with a nice little rebrand. But I'm going to leave it at that for now. So, let's get into it. Who? Let's pick. What lady do we want to start with today? I got the wheel in my head. Right. Who we want to go? Which Um, Let's start with Candice. Candace. Ding, 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 Candace. I'm going to go on record and I'm going to say, I think I'm the only person that likes Candace a little bit more than everybody else. I don't think she that bad. I mean, she is always getting into some shit, but I don't think she's that bad to where they need to kick her off the show. Like, some people really feel like she should not be on the show. 
Mm, there's other housewives I feel differently about, but okay. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think Candace is one of them. But you know, hey, she over here now. She mad because Monique done tried to fight fire with fire, and now she mad because Monique want to sue her. Even though she was suing Monique, now she don't like the, that the shoe on the other foot. Yeah, I don't know what she thought about that. Like, girl, if you watch anything, if you sue somebody, they're going to try to sue you back. <laughs> Unless they, like, know what they're doing. Like, they're going to try to sue you back. And when she, or when actually the tabloids came out and it said that Monique's been charged with second degree assault. Bro, and then they had that little tea. What was that? A little party with when they were all wearing pink. Yes, that was Wendy's um, baby. A oh, baby, yes. The the sipping tea. The sipping tea. Yes, with her child. Uh, little tidbit. Yes, ma'am. Can I come on, Nigeria? I love that throwing that money all over the place. Come throw some money on me. Okay. Yes, let's celebrate, people. Yeah, when they had the tea, and you know everybody was kind of like. Yeah, Candace, so we've seen, you know, that Monique was charged for second degree assault, and, you know, we don't want her to go to jail, and Candace was like, we don't. Damn, what's like, <laughs> why we don't? Because I'm, I'm sure I'm the one that was getting busted in the head, not you. No, really. But I really didn't think she would take it that far to where she would charge her with second degree assault. Like, girl, calm down. Everybody getting a little tussle every now and then. You better get them hands right. Click on your feet. She was just, once again, Candace is just being Candace and being, but dramatic. Yes, but as far, even though we're talking about Candace right now, I just, Monique's little um, interview on the Fox show with Claudia Jordan and all of them, it keeps playing in my head because at the end of the day, Monique said herself, Giselle and Robin were the ones who were trying to make Monique look bad this season from the get-go. It didn't matter if it was this fight or anything. They were going to try to pin something on that girl for no reason just because they wanted to. And those are the two people that we really should be talking about. I mean, I don't have no problem with Robin and Giselle. I like them, actually. But... Yeah, that's crazy that that they had this little scheming plan to, you know, try to get her out or whatever the fuck they were trying to do. Um, I just really don't be getting, like, messy vibes from Robin. But Robin is friends with Giselle. Giselle is messy. But they also have to play that role to keep the show going. That part. Because Robin... She's not necessarily messy. Has she told some tea before? Yes, but I feel like she's told it when, like, her back's up against the wall or, like, when she's forced to say, well, yeah, I did here. Or, yeah. you know, like, so I don't know. But I just think, I, well, really, you know, I think it's Giselle. And I think Karen is right. When she's, I think she said in the last episode, she's like, um, what Giselle got going on because Giselle always comes for Karen when Giselle shit not right at home. Oh, oh, and Giselle shit not right at home because she over here dealing with Jamal cheating ass again. Talk about I don't think we should go no further. Right, like I don't. And what? Did I, okay, did you the whole car situation? What was that about? I really don't know. Oh. oh. I was really confused on that part. Because I was like, yeah, he's still living in Atlanta. Wait, he, where did he live? I don't know, because he always gone. No, he live in Atlanta, and they live in Potomac. I think he's in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And that's my thing. So, y'all trying to start this new, fresh relationship, but it's long. Day. I don't know. I just, I don't think she should do it. The fact that your own daughters don't want you to date their father, point blank, period, I would have stopped that shit right then. My thing is, why would you do a long distance relationship with a man that's already cheated on you before? Why, why would you do that? Can like, we talk? Okay, can we talk about it? Can we get a, can we get an amen for the pastor? Because sis like what how dumb do you look and then your daddy dogged you but we talked about that but still yeah I, that, that would just be dumb for Giselle to put herself back in that situation and the fact that her daughters are getting older like why would you want to see your daughters I mean why would you want your daughters to see you going through that with a man that's put you through that previously and, and they know that and you yeah you going back to them 
since we're talking about how to show our daughters and show black women how to be strong and whatnot, and y'all trying to make Monique look so bad, since you're crawling back to a man that has had seven kids on you outside of your three, so I'm just not quite sure what you're teaching. Hmm. Hmm. Well. And Karen, I understand. I th- give her her money back, Ray. Give her her money back. And see, th- this is a sketchy time to bring that up because their marriage is already rocky and... I don't even know why they would bring up that, like, oh, well, I heard that you said you wanted to... Actually, I think it was Giselle Missy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they say, you know, um, Monique told me that you know, when y'all were down there drinking, you said you wanted your money back. Like, I don't think she meant it as, like, I really want him to get my money back. But she's just like, you know, that she hates that they both went through that. And she want her money back from the government. Not from, you know, exactly Ray, but... And yeah, maybe, they love to twist shit. And maybe that's why she's going so hard with her perfumes and running her business. She's trying to stack them coins back but up. But see, Ray don't like that. Ray don't like that she's working and doing all that and leaving him at home. The fact that he said that in that interview, like, she used to be the wife of me. Now I'm the husband of Karen Huger. Okay, so what? Right, what's the problem? Like, I was behind you for so many years. Now you, it's a problem that you behind me men. Girl, I'm not gonna lie, so I was talking to my mama about this. She doesn't love to get into the Potomac stuff, but sometimes I can get her to talk with me about it. And she said that Ray is a con artist. He been a con artist. He just, that's why he got caught up with that tax shit, because I said he was retired. And she was like, uh, yeah, retired more like he can't get no business. Um, yeah, nice. she's my mama said Karen fell for the bad boy. He had the money. My mother said that Ray is a con artist, and that's how they made their money. Yikes! Okay, well, the tax problems that makes it that make that makes sense. Exactly, that makes sense. And then Robin got her tax problems, but she got her tax problems because her dumb ass tried to do her own tax. Yeah, that that seems <laughs> that seems real realistic for Robin. Like, no, it does. She, I feel like they have money, but they're cheap. Like they're real cheap. Like she didn't want to pay an accountant, so she's like, okay, I just tried to do this shit myself and fucked the hell up, and now she in the problem she in, but she'll be able to pay it off. But yeah, it's let's cheap. talk about um, Karen calling her hat place embezzled. It's embezzled, right? Bitch, you know my shit is not called embezzled. <laughs> like, you trying to play me. When it's clearly embellished, and embellished. I could not. I could not. But I just love how they had a little photo shoot on the last episode. But the truth of the matter is, none of those pictures are on that website. The only pictures on that website are of Robin and the model that she hired that day. I told Sydney maybe they just haven't been posted on there yet. Mm-mm. Because the show was filmed months ago. And the hats that all the housewives have on are on the site on other people. (laughs) So maybe she just didn't think they looked good on you ladies. Or maybe it was one of those like stage things. Because y'all, I'm 10 seasons deep into Real Housewives in New York. And my ass is three seasons deep into New York and done finished Beverly Hills. Woo, woo, woo. We are franchise the Real Housewives over here. Might as well. But I just think it's so, I just think, but as I've watched so many franchises, like, you can see when it's like, nah, they set this shit. Right, exactly. They, because sometimes it's just like, why are you, but you. Yeah, if you don't like that person, (laughs) why are you even here? But then it's like, okay, that's why the drama is coming because you're like, oh, I don't want to be here with this person. And here it goes. That's exactly what they wanted y'all to do. Or they'll bring, they'll tell somebody to walk up and bring up something that you don't like. And then you're like, what? And then there goes a cat fat fight. Like, or they won't tell them how's it, uh, who you filming with. And then you walk into it because I saw some girls admit to that. It was like, they didn't tell me I was filming with her. So I walked in here and I saw this bitch. Like, and so yeah, that's going to piss you <laughs> off. That's going to piss you off. Just like you walking into work and seeing a bitch you don't like. Okay. The same thing. So, or me hearing about people who don't vote piss me off. Period. So, it's a it's a love hate, but I don't know. Monique is handling everything well, even though she has been kind of petty in the situation still too. Like you egg the shit on, but I don't know. And I love how her little podcast. Do we think she finally? Do we think those real people? Nateria thinks that everybody that came was uh, paid. 
how many tickets did she really sell? Because at the beginning, she was like, they only sold like, what, 20 tickets? And they were trying to sell like 100 or something or 300. And all of a sudden, that whole packed out. Okay, like, really? <laughs> if y'all put up an extra sign that say free extras, just say that. We need extras. Extra, extra, read all about it. Damn. They probably just picked up people off the street and said, look, come in here. We, were, we filming a show. You better act happy to be here. Act interested. <laughs> Not to act interested. And boom. And then Wendy. I'm sorry. I was literally crying watching Karen imitate Wendy walk down them stairs. I could not. I was just like, y'all had to play her. Because really, it looked like Wendy was walking down them stairs in some shoes that was hurting her feet. Or some shoes that she was trying not to fall in. Because I know mm-hmm. them timid. She was taking them small steps. Yeah. That's what she was doing. <laughs> yeah, they real childish when they were all imitating her. Like, really? But Wendy had me cracking up because Karen was like, and I know I don't have a degree. Wendy said, not now one. I didn't even hear her say that. Oh my gosh. Now I got to go back and watch it again because that sounds hilarious. Oh my gosh. No, I thought it was funny when Wendy was like, I don't never brag about my degrees. And then they play play like the eight clips of her saying, I have four degrees. I have four degrees, sweetie. Address me. It's Dr. Wendy. Oh, girl. And then that's when Karen's like, I'm married to a doctor. Yeah, a jury. Oh, yeah, she married to, and then Wendy, I'm married to the Juris Doctorate. Throw them titles around, black folk. I love to see it. Throw y'all titles around. Tell them where y'all came from, okay? Yeah. But these three episodes have just, while they've been good, they have been stretched out. They are dragging the situation along. We're waiting for this fight between the husbands. Yes, yeah. and I want to see what this little outcome is of... This these these bitches suing each other. Oh, it's nothing. You can Google that. Nothing happened. That shit was dead. Monique tweeted that, that shit it was, was pretty much show. it was dead. No, not the show. Like she did sue her, but Monique's lawyer came back and said that it was a mutual assault and that there was no case and they had it thrown out. Okay, mutual assault. Probably because I looked at much about that glass. <laughs> So they're really, Monique did tweet that. She was like, there's really no story here. Like the case was dismissed, like, I guess days or no more than a week after she tried suing her. There really was no story. So that's what I'm saying. The show is dragging this shit out. But if you look it up, it was over and done with. Monique's lawyers came back and was like, no, 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 sis. No, no, no. Shut that ass down. We're not doing that. So Monique is not going to jail. Good, good. Because I know she was talking about, oh, they could arrest me in front of my kids. Like, girl, so you hitting a bitch across the head? Like, come on. But like they say, Candace mama done hit her in the head with a purse, so <laughs> how could she be mad? Girl, this is all too funny. But thank y'all. We're going to wrap it up here. Yes, thank you guys for tuning in with us, coming back fresh with us after the little COVID little situation yeah well we've been gone for like maybe like three weeks yeah a little under three weeks but i think it was a good break you yes. know it was a good little break take some time off but give you guys time to miss us a little bit right so we do like we said we have this episode and two more and then we're going to take a bit of a longer break we got a lot of good stuff so we're gonna have some content that we're gonna work on in december for you guys and just keep listening because we're gonna go into more detail in our last episode yes 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 so stay tuned in we got some good shows coming to wrap up the season we appreciate all the love all the support all the shares all the follows so just keep it up guys Please, please, please ride with us to the top. Why don't you? Yes. So, with that being said, all my out-of-town people, come with us. All my Houston people, stay with us. We're in these streets with Barco the Chats. Let's get it.